This video is about double integrals over rectangles, reversing the order of integration. So that means changing from dy dx to dx dy, so you evaluate with respect to the opposite variable first. Fubini's theorem says that if f of xy is continuous throughout the rectangular region r, where x goes from a to b and y goes from c to d, then the double integral over r of f of x, y, dA is equal to the integral from c to d of the integral from a to b of f of x, y, dx, dy. So notice in this one, I would evaluate with respect to x first, x going from a to b, and get the area of the x cross sections and then I would evaluate with respect to y going from c to d. Fubini's theorem tells us this is equal to the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, dx. So notice that in this first one we had dx, dy. In the second one we have dy, dx. So we would be evaluating with respect to the opposite variable first. In other words, we can switch the order of integration. And sometimes one order is much easier than the other. So we have a couple examples. We'll do one in this video and then we'll do one in the following video um, showing you how it can make a big difference in your integration if you switch the order of which one you do first. So our example says evaluate the double integral, um, double integral over the region R of x, y, e to the x, y squared dA over the region R where x goes from 0 to 2 and y goes from 0 to 1. So we'll set up both ways with respect to x first and with respect to y first and then we'll talk about which one would give us an easier integration? Okay, so we have either the integral where we do the x first, so integral from 0 to 2 of x, y, e to the x, y squared dx, and our outer integral would be dy, and y goes from 0 to 1. So we have double integral 0 to 1, um, of integral 0 to 2 x, y, e to the x, y squared dx, dy. Or, if we do the y first, we would have a double integral where y is our inner integral. y is going from 0 to 1. We have x, y, e to the x, y squared, so our integrand does not change the actual function that we're integrating. And then our outer integral is with respect to x. So we would have the double integral, 0 to 2, 0 to 1, of x, y, e to the x, y squared, dy, dx. Now let's think about the methods we would use for integrating these. So on this first one, my inner integral is 0 to 2, x, y, e to the x, y squared, dx. So y is like a constant, and um, x is my variable. So I have xy times e to the xy squared. Now the xy is not a derivative of the xy squared, and so I cannot use u substitution. So in order to evaluate that, um, I would actually have to use integration by parts. So I would have u equals xy, dv equals e to the xy squared dx. Now remember, for integration by parts, I need to find a du and a v. du would be y, because I'm um, taking the derivative with respect to x. v would be e to the xy squared over y squared, because I'm taking the antiderivative with respect to x in order to find v. 
and then for integration by parts we would have um, the integral from 0 to 2 of xy e to the xy squared dx equals uv minus the integral of v du. So we would have to go through that process and then we would actually have to do another integral of v du. Now on the other hand, on the right hand side, we have the inner integral from 0 to 1 of xy e to the xy squared dy. So now y is our variable, x is a constant. So xy is actually the derivative up to a constant multiple of xy squared, our exponent. And so I could use u substitution on this one. So I'd say u equals xy squared, the exponent, du equals 2xy dy. So this is with respect to y. So xy dy could actually be replaced by 1 half du. Now I'm going to change the bounds of integration using my u function. So when y equals 0, my lower bound, u equals x times 0 squared, which is 0. So my lower bound is still going to be 0. When y equals 1, my upper bound, then u equals x times 1 squared, which is x. So I've changed my bounds so they're in terms of u so that I won't have to go back in my substitution. I can now just evaluate with respect to u. So I get the integral from 0 to 1 of xy e to the xy squared dy is equal to the integral from 0 to x, because we changed our bounds, so they're in terms of u, of e to the u, so u equals the xy squared, uh, uh, and of d times du and then the one half on the outside because we found out that xy dy is replaced by one half du. Okay, so now we evaluate. So we get one half e to the u from u equals x to u equals zero. So upper bound minus lower bound, one half e to the x minus e to the zero is equivalent to one half e to the x minus one. Now we haven't found our total um, double integral yet. We've only found the inner integral and so now I have to plug this back into my outer integral. The integral from 0 to 2, I'm going to pull the 1 half out front and then have e to the x minus 1 dx. So that's 1 half e to the x minus x evaluated from 0 to 2 and that's 1 half e squared minus 2 minus 1 half e to the 0 minus 0. So that's 1 half e squared minus 3 halves. So that's my total double integral. Notice I did not finish the integration by parts on the left hand side. That would have been a lot more work because I would have had to actually do a second um, antiderivative just to get that inner integral and then I would still have to take the outer integral. So when you're setting up your um, double integrals, please be sure to check whether one, um, one order of integration is easier than the other.